another thing that we're trying out here with Michael Hawley on Wednesdays. Tell me why with a variety of questions, however many we can get to in the time that we have. Let's start with this. Tell me why the 0-3 Bengals or the 0-3 Jaguars, take your pick, can turn things around and make it to the playoffs. Oh, give me the Bengals. I am moving away from the Jaguars. I don't think they can. I think they've got real problems. But at least the Bengals, Mike, they've got a franchise quarterback who did look pretty good uh, on Monday night uh, against the Commanders. The problem was on defense. They couldn't stop anybody. But but Joe Burrow had his Joe Burrow moments. He's got T. Higgins coming back. Uh, he played on Monday, had some good plays. It was Burrow to chase the beginning of the game. That looked very familiar. And they they haven't been here before at 0-3, but they have had rough starts before to recover. So I can see the Bengals getting back in the conversation. I don't think they'll be able to overcome it and win the division, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them win, you know, seven of the next 10. We've seen that from them before. The Jaguars, uh, I'll let you have them. I think that is, uh, that is far above my pay grade. I just don't think they have it in them. Yeah, look, we've seen Joe Burrow embrace postseason football. The moment he recognizes our margin for error is so small that the rest of the season is basically the postseason, that's when he'll slip into overdrive. I think the Bengals far more suited to turn this around. The Jaguars are 1-8 in, in their last nine games. They were 8-3 and three to start the season last year. Something has happened to them, and it's not coming back. And I mentioned my unofficial Bill Belichick watch list. Before this weekend, it consisted of three teams in the NFC East, the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Giants. After Monday night, I added two teams to it. I added the Jaguars, and I added the Bengals. Now, the Bengals will never hire him because Mike Brown will never pay him. And even if Jerry Jones and Bill Belichick could work something out where Bill takes a discount, I don't think that would ever happen in Cincinnati, even though that might be the best team he could go coach. The Jaguars would make sense. No state income tax in Florida. We know Bill doesn't like to pay income tax. And you could go there and try to turn the Jaguars around. A team that's never been to a Super Bowl. A team that's got a franchise quarterback who maybe needs a little bit of a Bill Belichicki and kick in the ass to get his career, you know, on par with Brady or on track with Brady. We talked yesterday about some of the things Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence has said in the past that, you know, maybe he doesn't have that, that overpowering desire to prove people wrong and go out there and win. Maybe Belichick could instill that in him. But I don't see any hope for the Jaguars this year. I think it's just a matter of time before Doug Peterson's out and Shad Khan, the owner of the team, is making plans for who his next coach is going to be. So give me the Bengals and give me Bill Belichick to the Jaguars on the unofficial PFT Belichick watch list. Well, that guy right there, if Bill Belichick does go to the Jaguars, you see Matt Jones being sacked and losing the football. Uh, if he does go to the Jaguars, he'll say, hey, forget about the contract. You got to get him away from me. Okay, I left New England. Part of the reason I'm not in New England anymore is because of Mac Jones. Uh, I don't want Mac Jones as my backup quarterback, as my scout team quarterback, as an advisor. He's got to be off the roster. But I wonder if Jacksonville, if that, if that team and that division has enough juice for Belichick. AFC South, that's not really his thing. Now, now we're talking of, we talked earlier about Dallas, Philadelphia, the Giants, the NFC East, I could see him going to either of those teams, any of those teams and saying, okay, I can turn this around. This is where I want to be. This is where the attention is. I like it. I like the fan base. Um, I like the profile of these legacy organizations. I, I just don't think the Jaguars would do it for him. I don't disagree with that. I mean, I feel like the Giants are the one team that he would love to find his way to coach. The name has come up in the past when all that stuff was going on with Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady, Robert Kraft, the, the long article from Seth Wickersham that kind of stirred stuff up in the aftermath of that. Gary Myers floated the idea of Belichick wanting to go to the Giants. So I just, I, I just put the Jaguars on there because I could see the Jaguars being interested. And the question is, how much money, how much power do you not want to pay state income tax? In Florida, that would that would uh, check that box. So uh, I'm just keeping an eye on it. Uh, don't keep an eye on the Jets, though. I had I had a friend a few weeks ago say, wouldn't it be wild if Belichick coached the Jets? Yeah, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Here's Belichick from earlier in the week talking about the resurgence of Sam Darnold. Pay close attention for the stray caught by the NYJ. 
you know, but I'll say this. Everybody has liked Darnold except the Jets. Um, you know, the, the people <laughs> at Carolina that I talked to, they, they really liked him. Uh, he was, you know, at the Rams and not for very long. They liked him. I think they want to re-sign him. You know, he was looking for more of an opportunity than to, to play behind Stafford. And then, uh, you know, I, I know that Kevin and, and some of the coaches in Minnesota, they really like this guy, too. So uh, it seemed like the only people that didn't didn't like Darnold were, were at the Jets. Wow, Bill the Svengali got Darnold and Baker Mayfield confused there for a second. Mayfield is the one who went to the Rams, Bill, but it's okay. We'll give you a pass. You, you, were, you were busy coaching the Patriots at the time that Baker Mayfield, not Sam Darnold, went to the Rams. But the point is, firing a little shot there at the Jets. Can't let it go. Can't quit hating on the Jets, Michael. Why is that? Can't let it go. I, Mike, you, not, you need to get yourself a rival the way Belichick has one in the Jets. This is... This is Ohio State, Michigan. This is old school Raiders, Chiefs, where they just have each other on the brain, not just before the games, but in the offseason, year round. And I've just seen Belichick over the years. He has a deep seated. I mean, it is so it is so unhealthy. It is so angry, but compelling too. Uh, that the way he thinks about the Jets at all times is crazy. I remember um, I used to keep a little chart of how many times after, and it's just like a little little thing. I'd say, okay, when is he going to say it? Every time they beat the Jets, I said, watch. In the first minute, his press conference, he's going to come out and say, hey, it's always great to beat the Jets. I'll bet you I've got about 10 or 12 of those clips. <laughs> we can find it. It's always great to beat the Jets. He hates them. He used to, I remember one year, you remember this, uh, this defensive tackle from, I think he was from Kentucky. He, he, wa- he wound up being a bust. Uh, Dwayne, remember Dwayne Robertson? Yes. Little guy, top five pick, wound up being a top five pick of the Jets. So there was a rumor, and Belichick, he really kept this going. Don't ever let him say he doesn't pay attention to what's said in the media. So there was, that year, the Patriots had two first-round picks, and there were rumors that the Patriots were going to move up in the draft to draft Dwayne Robertson because they needed a defensive tackle. And he told people in the building, he was like, keep that going. Keep that, keep that rumor going. Cause I think the jets, <laughs> I think the jets might do something with this guy and I want to see it happen. Sure enough, the jets move up into the top five. I think they moved up to number four. They take Dwayne Robertson and the Patriots sit back and laugh that they kind of uh, they kind of trapped or they kind of lured the Jets into taking a player that they didn't want in the first place. I mean, he hates them. It goes back to Steve Gutman, uh, the former president who said Bill Belichick was having some psychological problems when he resigned as head coach of the uh, NYJ, uh, that famous press conference. Mangini and Spygate, he, he had problems with Rex Ryan. I mean, he hates the jet parcels, of course, any opportunity he gets, he's going to take shots at the Jets. That's just what he does. That's what made it so odd that he, he joined among his various media jobs. He's working with Mike Tannenbaum's group because Tannenbaum was the guy that ultimately, as legend has it, blew the whistle on Spygate once he heard what Mangini had to say about what went on during the games. So, I don't know, maybe some fences can be mended, but no fences mended with the New York Jets organization. And as Gary points out, it wasn't a stray, it was a Scud missile that was launched by Bill Belichick back at the New York Jets. So, uh, I, I hope that wherever there will be more. he coaches, I hope wherever he coaches, if he coaches again, he gets to play the Jets on a semi-regular basis. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.